Hey, I'm John. Welcome back to Mr. G's Workbench. And today we're going to get into part three of our build review of Kitty Hawk's SH-60F Ocean Hawk. If you recall, we left off at the end of episode two. We were getting ready to go into the paint booth. The assembly of the main fuselage and, uh, and components was done. Uh, Sega Disclosure, I have begun priming and painting since then. So we'll take a look at that. I'll explain my paint process to you and I'll show you the scheme we're going with and I hope you guys like it. Uh, aside from that, quick note, thanks to Jim over at Kitmaker for providing the kit we're reviewing. Uh, there's a link down in the uh, details that'll take you to the Kitmaker family of websites. Spoiler alert, it's kitmaker.net. That'll take you to the main page where there are links to the uh, all the other Kitmaker websites, Armorama, uh, Model Shipwrights, there's a, a slew of them. There's one for every aspect of this hobby. So be sure to check them out. Uh, be sure to, to show some love to Jim for me, all right? So thank you again, Jim, for providing the kit. And standard YouTube fare, I, I say it every time. If you enjoy my video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. If you don't like my video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs down. Either way, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know what I'm doing right. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. It'd be very much appreciated. Uh, there's also, uh, I have an Instagram page. Uh, that's my Instagram handle right there. Be sure to check it out. I usually post pictures of stuff uh, prior to putting out the video. So take a look. Let me know what you think. And uh, that being said, uh, let's jump in and get back to painting and assembly. All right, let's take a look. So we're in the middle of the paint process at this point. And uh, I'm sorry I didn't film everything I did here. Uh, I think you guys kind of know how to paint in general. So let me pay you the compliment of just cutting to the chase here. Uh, the point we're at here, the entire airframe was primed with Mr. Servicer 1500 Black. After I did that, I started painting it uh, with AK Real Colors Dark Ghost Gray. Uh, I was using it in uh, thin layers, and then I, I went over the whole thing. Uh, once I had the entire helicopter in gray, I then started painting the white sections, which we'll get into the scheme, uh, you know, later on. Uh, so the, the center here is white. The, there are side panels here, and the front doors are white. I painted those and masked them off. After that, I went in and uh, I started painting the areas that are international orange. And international orange from, uh, from MRP is just off the hook. It's great. You can apply it in thin layers. If you want to weather it, you know, and get like an uneven weathered look, you can do it with this. So uh, that's where we're at. And I'm going to point out, I'm going to redo the, the tail. Uh, and this area here on the middle of the tail, and I'm also going to redo this area of the tail back here. Uh, they're darker than the other areas of orange. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit these with a, a light shade, a shade of light gray, not white, because then it, I think it'll look too bright compared to that. I'm going to go back, do that, then respray the orange. Then what I'm going to do uh, so that it's obvious. I'm going to unmask this. I'm going to cover over the orange and the white areas and I'm going to respray uh, the gray to touch it up where I need to like around the borders and stuff uh, and the roof area here. Uh, that's not supposed to be white. It's supposed to be gray. So once I get everything masked up, I'll do that. So let me jump in and we'll take care of that. So I'm in the midst of uh, painting, repainting, taping, retaping, and touching up. Uh, if you don't know which marking this is yet, it's going to be the markings for the Longhorns. The Longhorns are the search and rescue uh, guys for Naval Air Station Fallon, which is located in Nevada. That Naval Air Station Fallon is also the home of the Naval Strike and Warfare Center. Uh, that's where the air-to-air -air and air-to-ground training for the Navy and the Marine Corps takes place. 
So, um, I thought it was really cool. Honestly, my other option was going to be the Dusty Dogs, which is the green tail and the Bulldogs on the sides. Uh, I just thought this looked different from anything else, which is why I went with it. Um, you can see I still have quite a few touch-ups to do. Uh, this paint's going to have to get a good rub down as well before I go to clear coat. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and do these touch-ups on the orange. On the sides I have to do it as well. Um, after that I'm going to paint the nose and the exhaust areas black like they're supposed to be. So let me, uh, let me continue with this series of touch-ups and then I'll, I'll show you where we're at and we'll discuss. So we're going into round three of mask and paint. I had to go back, uh, retouch one color, create issues with another color. So I got to go back. I got to spray this uh, and the other side orange again. I'm going to touch up the orange over here and, uh, and on the bottom here. I also went, I had to fill in some gaps on the front of these sensors here. So uh, I have to paint over that as well. And then hopefully that'll be it for the orange and white. And then we can move on and get the black masked off and move on. we're ready to get these wheels on so this isn't sitting on the legs uh, I went in I I did the uh, the areas that would be metal I hit them with some silver paint uh, I'll if I have to I'll touch them up later I'm gonna glue them on using handy dandy two-part epoxy da -da -da -da. so let's get the wheels uh, epoxied and get on with this
So I've gone ahead and I've applied uh, an oil wash to the uh, rivet lines, uh, the panel lines here, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it really, it shows up really well back here if I can get this. The rivets and, and the panel lines on the, on the tail. And you can kind of see here that uh, it's kind of brought out some of the panel lines and stuff. Uh, the one thing that I have noticed is obviously once you start putting, you know, a black wash in the rivet lines, it makes the overall helicopter look a little darker. I mean, this is a relatively clean helicopter. You know, all the pictures show it very clean. But, you know what, in 135th scale, you can't do that. It's got to have something to it, so... So I think we've wrapped up uh, the work we're going to do for today. So this is where we're at. And uh, I'll give you a quick run through front to back. Uh, what I've done uh, and where we're headed. All right. So let's take a let's take a closer look at this. A quick look front to back. The plan here is I'm going to have this front door open. Uh, I got some touch ups to do around the doorway, which was going to happen because of the because of the foam. So that's where we're at there. You can see this door will be open. I've already got the, as we discussed earlier, the incorrect items in there. Uh, I haven't cleaned up any of this glass, by the way, so no comments on the dirty glass. I have to polish it all up. Uh, I'm leaving this engine bay open so you can see what the factory, uh, well, the kit engine looks like exposed. It's actually kind of nice. I really can't complain about that. I think that's that's decently detailed for an out-of-the-box engine. Got that door open. We got the tanks there. Uh, you, you should be able to see there's the antenna line is here. I used Easy Line for that. Uh, it's supposed to be like a gray color or a white. Well, it's black today because that's what I got and I didn't want to paint it. And you can see it goes back to there. Uh, you can see the, uh, the tail is going to be uh, in its uh, deployed position. The uh, horizontal stabilizer, I guess it's called. Uh, I don't know if it's still called that on a helicopter. That's installed. Uh, I painted the white instead of using the provided decal. There's no way I was going get to that, get that done. Uh, I haven't attached the static wicks yet uh, or the, the rotors. That's going to be the next, uh, the next step to finish up. So we're going to take care of that. Uh, I haven't added in any of the navigation lights yet. Uh, I'm waiting until I get everything cleaned up and I fix the paint. Uh, I also have to put the uh, the wipers and stuff on the front here. This all has to get cleaned up. I gotta I gotta straighten up my line here, and uh, I'm not happy with the bottom. But you know, like especially these things, they didn't sit right. Uh, my problem is I'm an impulsive builder, so. I just kept going no matter what instead of you know stopping and trying to fix it but that's what I did the kit decals are thick they 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 set you know like they'll set down but they don't they don't pull into the rivet detail which you can especially tell on the Navy uh, writing here uh, you can almost see the outline let me show you like 
it just looks thick and you can almost see the edge of the decal in the right light uh, I'm not happy with that I really did my best to get that to pull down I used a hair dryer I used uh, the strongest setting solutions I had and still wound up with that um, uh, the silvering is at a minimum though so I'm, I'm good with that but like I said I, I wish the decals were a little thinner and reacted a little better setting solution but there we are so that's uh, that's where we stand with the uh, with the build review uh, I was happy with with my paint job I of course I instead of picking something a little simpler if I would have went with the dusty dogs it was two colors I could have knocked this out uh, instead I went with this orange white and gray I like the look of it it's eye-catching it's unique uh, it's just a pain in the ass to do so uh, the only other issue I had up to this point aside from my many self-inflicted build issues um, the decals are thick if they weren't so thick if they would if they sat better I'd be a lot happier but uh, in any event I'm happy with the the level of detail that Kitty Hawk gave in this kit is just great uh, the engine detail is great out of the box um, the cockpit detail is great um, I guess if you're a nitpicker and you know you know what it's supposed to look like I guess you could find fault with it but for me as a casual observer and the model builder I'm fairly happy with it if I wasn't so impulsive I could have taken more time and uh, and got a slightly better fit on some of the assemblies but overall I like the look of it I think it's gonna look really cool with the folded up rotors so the next time we get together uh, we're gonna assemble the rotors because I had to wait to do that until I can attach the uh, the arms that support the folded rotors so we're gonna do the folded rotors we're gonna do the brackets that hold them uh, we're gonna do the tail rotor we'll get the small details on the wipers the navigation lights all the little Michigats that's left to go on the uh, on the frame we'll get that done and we're gonna wrap this up uh, again uh, up to this point I'm happy with it so uh, please let me know in the comments if you've built one of these let me know how you felt about it if you haven't built one and you're thinking of building one let me know if I changed your mind at all because I tr I'd like to do that you know so uh, Thanks again to Jim over at Kitmaker for providing this kit for us to mess around with. Uh, and thank you all for watching. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. We're up over 1,130 subscribers. Blows my mind thinking about it. Uh, I, I, every time, I'm grateful to each and every one of you. And uh, I hope if you're not subscribed, I hope maybe this video changed your mind and you'll sign up. And don't forget to ring the bell so that you're notified every time I put out a new video. And uh, I'll see you guys the next time we get together to wrap this up. And stay well and take care, okay? Bye-bye.